what to do about repeat drunk drivers. I'm Adrian Pedersen today on Upfront. A four time convicted drunk driver accused of killing a Milwaukee police officer. Next, State Representative Jim Ott has a new idea you'll hear exclusively on Upfront about a drunk driving jail to treat repeat offenders. Plus, millions of deportations? The president tweeted ICE will start this week. I'll ask State Representative Jocasta Zamaripa about reaction in the immigrant community. And new state Democratic Party chairman Ben Wickler on how Democrats win Wisconsin in 2020. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Adrian Pedersen and this is Upfront. A jail specifically for drunk drivers. That's what a Milwaukee area lawmaker wants and he's talking about it for the first time on Upfront. I'll bring in Representative Jim Odd about that in just a moment. But first, Matt Smith reports on the death of an officer in a tragedy that's become all too familiar in Wisconsin. 34 year old Dante James has a plethora of mugshots. 2017 brought his fourth OWI. He shouldn't have been behind the wheel last week when he's accused of again driving drunk, running a red light, and killing Milwaukee police officer Koo Her, who was on his way home from work. This clearly was an individual that should not have been driving this car at this time. James's sentence of no prison time for his fourth offense OWI, lawmakers say, isn't uncommon. A judge originally sentenced James to two years in prison. <laughs> but then changed that sentence to probation, a year in the House of Corrections, and a revoked license until at least 2020. Another Wisconsin family is in disbelief. This is just a normal routine for him to come home every day. So, I, I mean, something like this to happen, I, I was just, I, I, I didn't believe it when I heard it. In Milwaukee, city leaders are sparring over an adequate response. So too are state lawmakers. A lot of this is gonna be how do we change people's behavior and, and the laws can do something here and we're going to use the laws as much as we can. James's third OWI came in 2012. There, prosecutors say he was driving around with an open 12 pack of beer with a 13 year old girl inside the vehicle at the time. Adrian. A troubling history there. Thank you, Matt. Last week, the state assembly took some small steps towards strengthening OWI laws. Lawmakers approved a five year mandatory minimum sentence for killing someone while driving drunk and another bill to require first time OWI offenders to appear in court. Representative Jim Ott sponsored those bills. He also has a new idea for dealing with repeat offenders. Representative Ott joins me now. Thank you for being here. Good to be with you, Adrian. What do you hope these bills do? Well, the, the bill, the Assembly Bill 15, that, uh, that requires first offenders to, to appear in court in all counties in Wisconsin. They have to in some counties now, but not all counties. What I'm hoping to do with this bill is to have fewer first offenders become second offenders. Um, and I think that having the, the person stand in front of the judge, even though it's not a criminal misdemeanor, it's a civil forfeiture, a, a pretty serious civil forfeiture, but to stand in front of the judge as compared to sending in a check or sending your attorney to appear for you, I think that can really make an impression on some people because standing in a courtroom is, is not a fun place to be. And I think some people would say, I never want to come back here again. A real uh, life consequence. Absolutely. Uh, the, the second bill, putting a five year mandatory minimum on homicide will OWI, that was Assembly Bill 17. Um, you know, right now in Wisconsin, if somebody, a drunk driver who kills someone, even if they don't have any prior offenses, they can get up to 25 years in prison. If they have prior offenses and kill someone, they can get up to 40 years in prison. But there's no minimum sentence. And so I've heard of, you know, many times judges do sentence appropriately, but I've heard of enough cases where, where a drunk driver kills someone and they get incarcerated for as little as a year or two. And it just seems to add insult to injury to the family who's lost someone. It, it's like, is that the value that the criminal justice system puts on your loved one, that they lost their life and the person who's responsible gets maybe a year or two behind bars. So this would require a five year mandatory minimum. And every time there's a tragedy like this, a drunk driving tragedy with this police officer, this really shines the light on OWI laws again. Do you think it'll stick this time though? Do you think something will actually change? Well, I think that the loss of that officer, uh, 
the other night. Incredibly terrible loss to his family and to the community. Um, and, and it's a, a very high profile case. And so I think people get more of a, an indication of how tragic a drunk driving crash can be to an innocent person. Uh, I will say that we have made some progress in the legislature over the last several sessions. Up until three or four years ago, a fourth offense in Wisconsin, if it was more than five years after the third offense, it still counted as a criminal misdemeanor. So Senator Darling and I did get a bill signed into law that makes fourth offense a felony in all cases. And I know you feel like you're really chipping away at this. You still say you have more work to do. You're trying to criminalize the first offense. Whenever we bring this up, people always blame the Tavern League. They say the Tavern League is so strong in Wisconsin, and that's why these OWI laws aren't tougher. Do you agree with that? Well, that's hard to say uh, what the reason is. You know, the, the pushback I get when we talk about criminalizing first offense is that um, the majority of first offenders don't reoffend again. I, th I think their recidivism rate is something around 25%. So that means around 75% of first offenders don't get a second offense. And people say, why should these people who never do anything wrong again have a criminal misdemeanor on the record for the rest of their lives? Flip side of that, though, is that, you know, first offense, uh, a lot of times people say, well, that's just somebody just made a mistake. Um, and well, it can be a very serious mistake because uh, roughly half or a little bit more of all alcohol-related crashes in Wisconsin are people who don't have a prior conviction for OWI, which tells me that that's how some of the people are caught. They crash into somebody or something, and then they're caught for drunk, driving drunk. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes the, uh, the pushback I get on, uh, well, big prison sentences, it's like, well, our prisons are overcrowded, and where are we going to put these people? You know. We'll have to build a new prison just for OWI offenders. I, I'm wondering about the idea of, uh, say, having some kind of a minimum security facility that's just for drunk drivers. Uh, you wouldn't have the expense of all the security fe features, and you'd be able to hold them there longer, so you could sentence a, a fourth offender to two, three, or four years. So you'd want to build a facility just for drunk drivers? Not even necessarily build it. Take an old manufacturing facility and, and you know, you wouldn't have to, again, have all the security features or the number of guards, but that's where you could send people to get more treatment and incarcerate them longer, keep them off the roads, which is what I want to do is keep our roads safer, not necessarily incarcerate people more, but then focus on treatment as well. They'd still have guards, but it wouldn't need all of the intense security You're features. You're saying it wouldn't cost as much. It wouldn't cost as much, and then you could focus more on the treatment, keep the people there longer so that when they'd get out, there'd be a better chance they're not going to go back and reoffend, and they'd have a chance if it's an alcohol addiction issue that they'd have a chance to work on it. Okay. Representative Ott, thank you for your time. Good to be with you, Adrian. The Assembly will vote Tuesday on the Republican-authored state budget, but the vote in the Senate is looking close after a second Republican senator said he will oppose the budget that came out of joint finance. Our editorial partner, WISPolitics.com, has the latest on their budget blog, available to subscribers, or you can also follow WISPolitics on Twitter. Later on up front, the new chairman of Wisconsin Democrats on his promise to build a powerhouse operation. But first, President Trump threatens a mass deportation of people in the country illegally starting this week. Next on up front, I'll ask about reaction in the immigrant community and we'll look at how there is still no fix for the dreamers. Upfront, brought to you by the American Transmission Company.